Hey there ladies and gentlemen, the food experience is back. In today's experience, I got round two of the Caloric Max Air Fryer Oven. As you know, I already had one of these. I already did an unboxing, some tutorials, some baking examples, that kind of thing. But I have learned a lot in that time. I had it for about six weeks. I needed to get a replace. Thank goodness for Caloric's awesome customer service. They were able to replace it for me. So let's go ahead and do this all over again. And I got a lot of insight for you. So here we go. Here's a look at the front of the box for the Caloric Max Air Fryer Oven with nine accessories. Left side of the box, right side of the box, and the back side of the box en français. The first thing that you'll get is two quick start guides, one in English, one in French. A Caloric product registration card, the Caloric Max Air Fryer Oven user manual, and a handy recipe book. I find the easiest way to unbox things is to tip it upside down and pull the box off. That's usually what works best for me. And um, I went ahead and tipped it right side up. Go ahead and get rid of the plastic wrap. I also have some tape on mine holding the doors in place. I'm just gonna go ahead and get rid of that. And you might as well get rid of these stickers too. They sure are beautiful looking, but you do not want them on there at any time while cooking. I'm gonna go ahead and open the doors. There's some extra parts of the accessories in there. One of the items that comes with the Max is a crumb tray. This is not a drip tray, not a drip pan or anything. If you notice, it has a lip that goes up like this, and it's intended for sitting on the floor of the oven to catch any crumbs, just like that below the heating elements. I'm going to leave it out right now. Part of the accessories it comes with is an air fryer basket. It also has a handle for the rotisserie and a handle to help remove the air fryer basket. I'm going to go ahead and take it apart off camera. Okay, so here's the air fryer basket. Here's the little handle that comes with it. You can optionally use this. I personally don't. I just use oven mitts and I pull the tray out. But if you wanted to, you could certainly hook it together like that and then go ahead and insert it in and out of the oven, okay? Like I said, I'd rather just do it by hand, but it's up to you guys. The other part is the rotisserie handle. It also comes with a rotisserie spit and two forks. So basically what you do is you stab this through your piece of meat. You go ahead and insert the forks. They go all the way through like that. You have these thumb screws on the side that you turn to tighten each one in place and these forks go right through the meat and of course you use the other one on the other side and also tighten it down and this way no matter what size the meat is you can move these forks closer or further apart depending on the size of the meat you could cook up to a five pound chicken or a couple pound tri-tip or whatever you like on there, anything that those forks will go into. When using the rotisserie, there's a part inside here that turns and then there's a static side right there that stays in place. And if you notice the way the rod is, this side right here with the kind of curved end to it, that side goes right inside there like that and it's keyed. It's only going to go in a certain way and the other side just drops down inside this little hook. When your rotisserie is finished, you basically just put this in and grab it out just like that. Next up, you get a traditional wire type of rack. It easily just slides into place just like that. And you can, like I said, use it on any one of the different heights. Totally up to you. And of course, you can put your food directly on top of that. Another very important piece that comes with is this baking pan. Now it can be used to bake directly on. I've also seen people use it upside down like that and bake cookies and different things like that right on top. If you notice, there's two arrows on each side indicating to put it in just like that. Now, this is also a drip pan, okay? So if you are cooking anything either on the wire rack or in the air fry basket or using the bacon tray, you definitely want this to catch the grease and you want this on one of the slots above the heating elements. It does not necessarily need to go there. It can go in any one of the different positions. Another item you'll receive is this bacon tray. You just 
put your bacon strips right across the side here. You could probably fit like five or six strips on there, depending on the size of your bacon. And the cool thing about it is, it goes right in the drip pan like that. All your bacon grease is gonna drip right onto the drip pan, right through those holes. And either put it up there, and that's gonna be the regular air frying position. And it's a little bit above that because of the bacon wave thing going on. Another accessory they give you is this steak grilling rack type of thing. I mean, it doesn't need to be used for a steak. It could be used for any kind of meat. You could put veggies on it, potatoes on it, basically anything you want. And this also could go in any one of the different levels as I've been showing you. Basically, you wanna use it at whatever level is best for whatever item you're cooking. This also has some waves on it, and it also is cut to go all the way through so your grease drips down below. And you could certainly put this right on top of the drip pan just like that. They are the same width, so everything fits together, and anything that you have on here will drip into the drip pan. And both items together will indeed fit in any one of the slots. I think it's really cool, very versatile the way they have this. So if you notice on the doors, you'll see dehydrator, fast air frying, broiled grill steak, air frying, bake two, which is pizza warm, defrost, roast and toast, and bake one for proofing. Now those are all the suggested levels for different items. You certainly don't need to use them that way. You'll also see rotisserie here, which is about even where the rotisserie rod goes through. But um, those are just kind of basic guidelines. Although when I have dehydrated things, I definitely use the very upper position. And when I proof dough, I definitely use the lowermost position, as you will see in different videos that I have on my channel. Here's a look at the front control panel. You're gonna have two different digit displays. You're gonna see a rotating thing, which is the rotisserie, a fan icon, which will light up when the air fryer function is turned on, and the different functions for air fry include air fry, chicken, warm, ribs, shrimp, steak, wings, bacon, fish, corn, fries, dehydrate, defrost, and veggies. And then you have some baking options. Bake, broil, pastry, pizza, proof, roast, and toast. Each one of these has different presets with different temperatures and different time that you could set. But there is the basic of the two, which is going to be air fry and bake. And I'll show you that as soon as I turn it on. Then let's quickly go over these buttons and I'll show you how they work in just a moment. But basically you've got rotisserie, light, air fry, oven, start and stop, and then you have a selector dial. All right, let's go ahead and connect it to an outlet. And once it's connected to an outlet, you'll hear it beep once, you'll see the start, stop, illuminate. Now that the Max is plugged in, I'll show you how it works. Basically, you could hit air fry, and these options are gonna illuminate right here. You could then use the selector dial to go between the different options. Warm, ribs, shrimp, steak, wings, bacon, fish, corn, fries, dehydrate, defrost, and veggies. After veggies, you could go ahead and rotate again, and it'll go back around to air fry. And if you notice, they're all different settings. The default is 15 minutes and 425 degrees. If I want to change that, push the dial in. It's going to go to the minutes and hours, and then you could go ahead and rotate the dial and set it for whatever you like. Once you have it dialed in, go ahead and press the selector knob again and it's gonna go over to the temperature, and then you could change the temperature to whatever you like. And let's see how low it goes in this position. So you could go as low as 140 degrees and up to 450 degrees. Now I wish it went the full spectrum of the oven. I believe the oven's capable of 80 degrees to 500 degrees, as you'll see on a couple of these settings. Not sure why they did that. So go ahead and press the selector dial again, and once you're ready to start, you can hit the start stop button. I'm not going to do that now, though. And if you notice, air fry is blinking, and you can go ahead and change it to a different setting if you want. If you use chicken, the rotisserie option is going to turn on automatically. Like I said, I'm not going to do these right now because I want to do a burn-in first. Uh, next, you're going to have warm. 
it defaults for six minutes 280 degrees so let's go ahead and go over to steak and if you notice steak allows you to go to 500 degrees default is 13 minutes next over you have wings what's really interesting is when you go to dehydrate this one allows further setting of the time like you could go I think all the way up to 10 hours okay so dehydrate goes to 9 hours and 59 minutes basically 10 hours go ahead and press select and it defaults to 130 but you could bring it down to 80 degrees and the highest you could go to is 155 degrees so like I said I really wish that the air fry function let you go between 80 and 500 degrees that way if someone doesn't want to use the different presets they could do everything on the basic setting maybe caloric if you're listening you could update it on the next version of the oven anyhow let's go down to oven from there you got bake broil pastry pizza proof roast and toast and like I said each one of them is gonna have different defaults as you could see and you can go ahead and play with them on your own to find out what works best. There's also the light button. When you press it, the oven light's going to turn on. And press it again, and it turns off. The oven light will also come on when you open the French doors. It'll also beep. There's a lot of beeps. And when you close the doors, it's going to go ahead and turn off. So the first thing they recommend doing is burning in the oven to get rid of any residue or oils that are there for manufacturing. And you could go ahead and go to steak it'll be on 500 degrees press the selector dial and up it to 20 minutes that's what they recommend after that you can press the start stop button and it's gonna go ahead and do its thing and I'm gonna let it go for 20 minutes and we'll be right back so one thing to note: while it is cooking and doing the burn-in test do not touch the glass portion of the doors with your hands it even has a warning symbol there to tell you not to do so. You will get burnt. Also, the edges of the oven can be rather hot, so try to avoid touching them as well. Also to note, when it's doing the burn-in, you can't see it from here because I can't get my tripod low enough. The top heating elements are on, the bottom ones are not on, and I believe that's how it is for air fry. And there we go, the cycle is completed. It shows off. It will turn off eventually, but what you can do is hold in the start stop button. If you do that for a few seconds, it will turn off just like that. And that's the same thing when you're cooking any food, you could go ahead and hold down start stop and it will stop the process and turn off. Another thing to note is the preheat process. When you start any of these functions, like I just started one for air fry, air fry is gonna be blinking. When the oven comes to temperature, air fry will turn solid. Very important to know and definitely something you want to use because once it's solid, then you could go ahead and throw in your food and you could guarantee perfect results. Otherwise, you're running the oven from a cold start and it takes a little bit to get up to temperature and your cooking time is going to be a little bit off from what anyone suggests. Another thing to consider is the location where you're going to be keeping your max. There are little pegs on the backhand side to keep it away from a wall. Maybe even move it out a little bit further than that so the oven can breathe. And make sure it is not like butted up next to anything on the sides or have anything on the top. You want to make sure the oven can breathe so that way it does not overheat. Now that the burn-in has completed, I'm going to go ahead and move it to where I would like to have it. Like I said, you want to leave a lot of space on the sides and on the top and have it away from the wall. I have it about five inches away from the wall. I could certainly move it back a little bit more. Uh, now it's about three and a half, four inches away from the wall, but you definitely want to leave enough space, folks. Another thing to note, before you insert the crumb tray, the wire rack, any of the other utensils, I would definitely wash them with something like Dawn soap or whatever other kitchen type of soap you have. Make sure to thoroughly wash them. Also, do not use anything metal to scrub down the inside of your Max oven or any of the accessories because it will scratch them, especially the steak tray, the bake drip pan, um, anything like that. You do not want to use anything abrasive on, okay? A lot of people seem to like using Dawn Power Wash to clean out the interior. I find that it works pretty good, but you got to get at it right away, okay? So when you're finished cooking something, 
let it cool down just a little bit and then go ahead and give a spray of anything inside that has some kind of a gunk buildup and if it's still warm make sure to put on a glove and use either a sponge or a paper towel like that and wipe off the debris don't keep cooking in it again and again because you're going to find it very difficult to remove that kind of stuff so stay on top of it make sure to do it each and every time you cook so that's about it those are all the basics and the essentials if you have any comments, questions, or concerns, or anything you want to know more about the Macs that I did not cover, please drop me a comment down below. I love interacting with people. And if you haven't subscribed already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Also, another thing to note, I found a couple of cool groups on Facebook for the Caloric Max Air Fryer Oven. In fact, one of the groups, my favorite one of all, is called Caloric Max Air Fryer Oven bunch of great people in there they share recipes they share you know pictures of their food when it's finished I mean some great interactions in there and I feel like I'm making some great friends in there as well there's also all kinds of accessories you could purchase aftermarket products for your max air fryer oven some of which are intended to go with it or just with a generic air fryer I just purchased these silicone mats off of Amazon they're kind of like a bake mat I think they could go up to 480 degrees Fahrenheit and um, I think you could use something like this in lieu of parchment paper. I still got to test it out, so I'm not exactly sure. I think you could maybe bake cookies on it, directly on it. Like I said, I'm not sure. I'm going to come back and do a video with that as well. I also found these cool donut molds. I'm going to try that out this weekend and make a donut video for you guys. Uh, see how it comes out, you know? Pretty handy little thing. So one of the other things I found was this rotisserie cage on Amazon. And um, I've used it already to make popcorn and to make frozen french fries. I'll tell you what, the frozen french fries come out better in this than they do out of the air fryer basket. I noticed with the air fryer basket, halfway through I kind of got to rotate it and shake the fries just to make sure none of them are getting burned. Um, with this, everything cooks perfectly and evenly. Everything's in motion all the time. Nothing is in one particular spot all the time. Because uh, one thing you will notice when using your Macs the back of the oven gets a little bit hotter than the front and sometimes halfway through cooking you gotta rotate your dishes around and something like this is a good solution for things that will fit inside it and a big shout out to all you folks out there in the Caloric Max air fryer oven group in case you're watching my little presentation tutorial video with that said we're gonna buzz out of here I'm gonna wish you all a very stellar day be excellent and most of all remember me I'm KJ Andio your food experience host with the most Take care, my fine folks, and I'll see you next time. Laters.